Hello, and uh, a very, very warm welcome uh, to those of you who have tuned in today to the Welsh Congregation uh, of New York. Croes o Canes, i bob un ohonoch i siwdidod i gyd addoli gyda ni fan hyn uh, yn, uh, yn uh, New York, yn Efrog Newydd. It's really wonderful having you uh, with us. Uh, we're a group of uh, uh, people who have Wales in common. Uh, many of us are expats from there. I'm an expat uh, 20 years. Uh, many are expats much longer than I. And uh, we really do welcome you here live on our Zoom uh, meeting. And uh, we also welcome those who will join us uh, later uh, during the week. It's good to have you with us. Well, we're going to begin with our call to worship, and our call to worship is from the first psalm, and it's going to be read to us by Cara Morse, who's been in the country for 10 years, originally from uh, Cardiff, as you'll see by her wonderful Welsh accent. And the reading is taken from the new version, the new Welsh version uh, of, the new of the Bible called Bible.net. Over to Cara. Good afternoon, hwnnw'n da i bawb, dyma Sam 1, ben diwdyw. Mae'r un sy'n gwrthod gwrando ar gyngor pobl ddrwg wedi ein ben diwdion fawr. Yr un sydd ddim yn cadw cwmni pechydiriaid, nac yn eistedd gyda rai sy'n gwneud dim byd ond dylorni pobl eraill. Yr un sydd wrth ei fodd yn gwneud beth mae'r arglwydd eisiau, ac yn myfyrio ar pethau mae'n ei dysgu, ddydd a nos. Bydd fel coeden wedi ei phlannu wrth frydiau o ddŵr yn dwi'n ffrwyth yn ei thymod a'i dail byth yn gwywo. Byth bynnag mae'n ei wneud bydd yn llwyddo, ond fydd hi ddim felly ar y rai drwg. Byddwn nhw fel ist, yn cael ei chwythu i ffwrdd gan y gwynt, fydd y rai ddrwg ddim yn gallu gwrstafell y farn, Bydd pechydiriaid ddim yn cael sefyll gyda dyrfa o rai cyfiawn. Mae'r arglwydd yn gofalu am y rai sy'n ei ddilyn, ond bydd y rai drwg yn cael ei ddifa. Diolch. Amen. Thank you. We're going to be singing now uh, one of my favourite uh, Welsh hymns, and it's called O Fy Iesu Bendigedig i ni gwmni fe naid gwan. And uh, it's one of the great hymns that expresses something of that deep fellowship that the believer has with uh, Jesus Christ. Um, we have the organ music to this. Uh, if you so wish to join uh, the four verses, then please do uh, at home. But uh, make sure that you are unmuted if muted. you sing muted. over yes see uh, you are muted <laughs> if you sing i'm sorry you are muted if you sing and uh, over now to over yes see
Let's pray together. As we face the new year, let's ask God to be with us. Let's pray. O oh Lord, our only Saviour, we cannot bear alone our Lord of responsibility. Lord, help us to do and bear up under you this coming year. We look without seeing, unless thou purge our sight. Grant us, O oh God, insight into what you are doing in our lives. O oh Lord, unless you are with us, O oh God, how can we move ahead? How can we grow? Almighty for and most merciful Father, you have given us grace in times past, and you have mercifully brought us to see the end of one year. And now, Lord, we pray for the year ahead. Lead us forward by your spirit from strength to strength, that we may more perfectly serve you and attain a more lively hope of your mercy in Christ Jesus. Arglwyddiesi, dyre di yn agos i ni yn y flwyddyn newydd. Helpa ni o arglwydd i dy ddilyn di, i wybod o dad fod ti gyda ni, fod ti byth yn angadel ni, a fod ti ni'n sy'n gwrando arno ni, wrth yn ni droi ato ti mewn gweddi. Ni'n dod o arglwydd, ni'n dod yn wan, i ddiw sy'n gryf. Ni'n dod o arglwydd fel pechaderiad, i ddiw sydd yn maddau, a ni'n dod i ti a'n creawdwr, ni'n dod y creaderiad, ac arglwydd arwain ni drwy'r bywyd, drwy'r flwyddyn nesaf, gofyn nhw'n y cyfan, yn enw ac yn haiddiant, a'n harglwydd, Iesu Grist. Dewch yn ni gydweddio gweddi'r arglwydd. Ein tad, yr hwnnwyt yn y nefoedd, sanc taiddiau'r dy enw, deled dy deirnas, gwneler dy ewyllus, megis yn y nef, felly ar y ddaear hefyd. Dyr o'i ni heddiw a'i'n bara beinyddiol, a maddau i ni a'i'n dyledion, fel y myddaiwn yna i'n dyledwyr. Ac nac harwain ni frofed i gaeth, aeth i'r gwared ni rhag drwg, can i saeddo ti o'r deirnas, a'r gallu a'r gogoniant, yn oes oes oedd. Amen. The scripture reading is taken uh, today from Romans chapter 8, verses 31 to 39, read to us uh, by James Thomas. And this will be a great introduction, of course, to the new year, because God is for us and not against us as we face 2024. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Jesus Christ, who died more than that, was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall trouble, shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Diolch yn fawr, James, am ddarllen, y bennod ar ddechog hynny. 
Blwyddyn newydd dda i chi. Blwyddyn newydd dda i bob un ohonoch chi fy hyn. And uh, to everyone, uh, a happy new year, wherever you may be uh, listening uh, this afternoon. Uh, for the last two weeks, we've been hearing this phrase and we've been greeting one another with Happy New Year, Blwyddyn newydd dda i chi. And of course, uh, as time runs out in January, it's not long before the use of the phrase will once again be tucked away and we will uh, bring it back out for the beginning of 2025. And there's a question I think we can fairly ask as to the meaning of one and one and every one of us actually greeting one another with Happy New Year or Blwyddyn Newydd What does it really mean? What's behind it? Now, some of you were thinking already, what's behind it, Pastor? Goodness gracious, it's quite straightforward. You're just wishing everybody a happy, a happy new year. Blwyddyn Newydd That's all it is. Why have you got to look at it philosophically? Why have, got to, why have you got to ask any questions? Surely it's just being polite. And I generally agree with you. There is a politeness in this. It's a greeting. It's a nice thing to say to people you know and you wish something very special on each and every one. We could, we could say it isn't a command. You're not commanding anyone to have a new year, though I'm sure some people would be very happy uh, if you can do that. But generally speaking, I don't know if you'll agree with me or not, but lots of people who say Happy New Year, all of us maybe, are saying another form of, well, um, the best of luck to you. I hope things go well for you. I hope it wasn't as bad as 2020 when we were all stuck in with COVID. I hope it's not going to be that bad. They say something like, well, cross fingers, I hope everything will be okay. It's a politeness, but it's a politeness based on a sort of hope that depends on what I may call as uh, fate for many people. For many people, especially people who are not of faith, they are hoping for the best. They are looking to fate and hoping that maybe saying something like this will, will change their fate. Now, it's quite amazing, of course, that uh, many people are very superstitious. We live in a, in a secular age, I know. Uh, we live in an age where people uh, really are putting a religion aside, practically, because they regard it as superstitious. Although many people who put religion aside became, become even more superstitious in doing it. There is still something of superstition stuck in many of us. Many of us looking into the new year are hoping for a bit of luck, if you like. There's a liturgy of luck going around in the world for many people who are wishing people a very a happy uh, new year. I, I, I think I said last year, because last year uh, the New Year sermon was a sermon I preached, my first sermon, uh, to you as a, as a congregation, actually, from this room uh, in my mother-in-law's uh, here in, on the North Shore. And uh, I gave you the story. I'm not going to repeat the whole story for you at all, but uh, the story is about a superstition that was had in Wales and was uh, shared by my great aunt, who would insist uh, that my brother and myself would come and sing Canny Clenig to them uh, every, uh, every year. And that would bring them good luck. We would stand outside the door, sing Clenig, Clenig, Boredi the Galan, and then we would get some money, and then she would usher us through the house and take us to the front door and say goodbye, give us uh, maybe a two shilling piece as she did it, which was marvellous in 1966, because you could buy all sorts of things uh, with it. But what she believed was this brought like it ushered out the old and gave room for the new. Now, generally speaking, I'm not superstitious. I don't want to be superstitious. 
But there is a temptation for each and every one of us to be just that. Sometimes we just hope, like Mr. McCorber uh, in Dickens, that something good will turn up. If we say the right words and if we do the right things, if we watch the black cats and don't let them walk in front of us, then everything will be okay. Well, today I want to bring the Christian New Year message, if you like, to each and every one of us. And ask the question, what do we mean when, as Christians and believers, uh, when we say Happy New Year of Luithin Newitha? And the first thing I want to say is this. It's not passive. It's not, well, I just hope something nice will happen to you or whatever. Rather, rather, it's a little bit more than that. Because in the Christian way, when we give and say Happy New Year to people, what we're saying is that you can actually have a happier New Year. There is a way that you can experience something of the happiness of a New Year. Something can happen. You can make a difference in the New Year to come, or otherwise we could say, you can do something about it. Now, I am not saying, please don't get me wrong here. I am not saying that um, as a Christian, everything is going to be wonderful and happy. I'm not gonna say that to any of you, I promise. Do you know the reality in life? Some of us get older, some of us, actually, all of us get older, not some of us, all of us get older. And, you know, all sorts of problems. We've got health problems. We've got other problems that come to us. And these don't go away in the new year. Uh, the new year isn't magic. The new year air isn't made of any different air than last year or the year before. There is no magic involved at all. But, but... There is a way, the Bible says, that we can be a happier than we could be without what the Bible says. Now, I love National Public Radio. I love it. I'm an addict. I'm not a musical guy, believe it or not, but I like I like news and I love NPR news uh, coming and I listen. And the other day on NPR, they were talking about the whole concept of happiness. Happiness. What makes people happy? And it's worth asking that question about the new year. It's worth asking it scientifically. What will make you happier in the new year? Well, the reality is that many studies, uh, one major study from Harvard just about five years ago, the book Happiness came out as a, a, a result of it. Uh, the, the, the people who wrote it argued this. If you care about other people more than yourself, you will be happier. If you try to make yourself the centre of your own world, you won't get happier. Rather, if you put other people first, if you do what is right, then that will bring a greater satisfaction uh, to your life. I don't know uh, how many Christmas presents you bought to people this year. But, you know, sometimes giving a gift to someone, whether it's at Christmas or at any other time, do you know, it makes you feel better. It's cost you maybe some great expense, but you bought it. It's just the right thing. And, you know, the happiness bounces back into your own soul. When we are concerned about other people, something happens deep down inside of every one of us. As you know, I love reading. And uh, a reader that I've read is Ayn Rand, fascinating reader, a fascinating uh, writer. 
And uh, I've read Fountainhead. I haven't read Atlas Shrugged. They say that if you've read Fountainhead, you've read Atlas Shrugged. And if you've read Atlas Shrugged, you've read Fountainhead. Now, I can't say uh, uh, that, um, but I'm not going to go to a thousand page novel that's going to be the same as the other thousand page novel that I, that I read. But Ayn Rand has this tendency to a sort of selfishness in her philosophy. She sort of says, do what you want for yourself. You are important. I think it was much later that the words selfish gene were used, maybe by Christopher Dawkins. I might, uh, I might be wrong on that one. In other words, selfishness can be really good for you. Look after yourself first and it will bring happiness. I am not convinced about that. I don't know all the details of Ayn Rand's life. I know her writing is quite magnificent, although I disagree with many of the conclusions she comes to in her novels. Yet when I see the characters that come out of some of those novels, Fountainhead being the main one, I don't see happiness. Actually, I see frustration. I, I feel darkness around me. Actually, happiness comes from thinking of others and putting someone else or something else at the centre of your life. And I would argue that those centres include what Jesus said, if you want to sum up the law, love the Lord your God with all your heart, love your neighbour as yourself. Put God in the centre and put your neighbour right there. Others, not yourself. Don't sit on the throne of your own life expecting everyone else to come and bow before you and do everything to your satisfaction. I was reading uh, a book uh, just three weeks ago. It's a famous book amongst people who've read on that period. And it's an 18th century work uh, uh, of devotion by a man called William Law. And uh, the name of the book written in 1728 is A Serious Call to Devout and Holy Life. A Serious Call to a Devout and Holy Life. And this book influenced some of the great people of the 18th century and 19th century. Samuel Johnson, uh, the great um, architect, if you like, of modern English, said that this was the, one of the great works uh, that he had read uh, in his lifetime. It affected John Wesley and Charles Wesley and the, and the Wesleyite movement in a big way. And it's really interesting. Now, let me say it's dated, okay? It's very dated. When you read it, it's like going into the cultural history of the 18th century. So I'm not going to say you should all just pick up this book and read it and it will be marvellous. But let me at least interpret some of the things I think are useful in the book. The title of chapter 11 is not catchy. No catchy titles in the 18th century. And here's the title. I'll read it for you. Chapter 11. Showing how great devotion fills one's lives with the greatest peace and happiness that can be uh, uh, enjoyed in this world. Now, that's not a catchy title. That's an explanation, really, of what he is going to talk about. And what he is saying is this, that if your life is centred on someone besides yourself, your devotion given over to another and in this case, of course, it is God, then the result of that is peace and happiness. It comes from that. He links together two words that many people don't want to link together. And those two words are happiness and holiness. And these come out of a relationship with God and also with neighbour. He goes on, excuse me, quoting once again, page 148, just in case you get my edition, that instead of making our lives dull and melancholy, 
These things will render them full of content and strong satisfaction. By these rules, we may change the childish satisfactions of our vain and sickly passions and the solid uh, enjoyments and rich happiness of another will be ours. In other words, he is arguing that if we put others in the centre, there will be a change in our lives. And, you know, many people sort of see that in an odd way. We feel that if we do change our lives somewhat, this is the whole thing of New Year's resolutions, then there will be some, if we make a resolution and keep to it, it will bring an added joy or happiness to our life. And what we have read here early on in Psalm 1 is exactly that. The first psalm starts with a promise. And that promise is this. Listen to it in English. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. Blessed is the man. Now, the word blessed can be interpreted in a number of ways. But one way is happiness. Happiness is the man who decides to, to live in a certain way, who decides to conform to the creator's manual. I'm not good with manuals at all. I am not good. I, as a child, I used to make ethics models. I'd love these ethics planes and galleons. I would spend hours painting them and putting them together. But there was one huge problem. I didn't like to read the instructions. Never liked the instructions. So I'd like to get on to doing it before reading the instructions. And generally, my models didn't work. There were certain things that wouldn't go together because I had not read uh, the instructions. And my pleasure and happiness in seeing the great galleon that I had built wasn't as much as it would have been if I'd listened uh, to those uh, instructions. Psalm 1 tells us that when we follow after him, then we can experience happiness. When we care for others before ourselves, blessedness and happiness can be part of our experience in 2024. And that's my simple message to you at the beginning of 2024. God and others. And you will not miss out in doing that. Actually, you will gain Believing by faith that God blesses and brings happiness to those who are willing to put him and others first. Another word for loving God. Let me pray a short prayer. Help us never to expect happiness from the world alone. Let me not think that I shall be happy by living to myself. Teach me that if I do not live a life that satisfies you, I shall not live a life that will satisfy myself. As we go in to this new year, I do wish you all a very happy new year. Ruin ruin gobeithio a gewchi bluithin newydda on blwyddyn newydd dda a diw yn y canol ac eraill hefyd yn dod y mwy canolog yn eich bywydau chi. Bendith diw ar bob un o honnoch chi uh, sy'n gwrando nawr ac hefyd sy'n gwrando uh, yn yr wythnosau uh, sy'n dod. I ni'n mynd i ganu nawr emyn arall, uh, hymn number 56. It's one of the great hymns of the Welsh language. O yes i mawr, roth anian byr, i aeddiol gwan, mewn anial, dyr. And it's number 56, if you have a book.
Bioch and Vau, Cor Maybion, Ponta de Les, Am um, Emin Havrid, Hani, O Yesimau, Pro Danian, the beer. O Jesus, give us your holy self uh, in our souls as we move on uh, to the next year. Uh, and here are some of our announcements, and Tom is going to uh, share uh, what's going on uh, with the church. And it's uh, going to be quite a busy time, I think. Tom. Yes, Kevin, thank you. Can everybody hear me okay, I hope? Yes. Okay. So um, uh, let me first go over the next few services so everybody's clear about that, because there are a few changes, uh, all good things. Um, and um, then I'll talk about um, our annual reading of Under Milkwood, which we have just scheduled. Um, so our next service after today will also be on Zoom. It will be held on February 11th at 3 o'clock EST, as is normal for us. Um, we have decided not to have a St. David service in March because the Earth Singers, the quartet that we had hosted last year, are available again. They're coming to the States, and um, we have elected to invite them to join our service, and the date they can do that is February 25th. So we have two services in February, the 11th on Zoom and the 25th, which is a live service the St. David's service, where we will be joined by the Earth Singers. Now, another important announcement. As many of you are aware, every year we have done a dinner on the fifth floor after the live service. We have a great caterer come in and make a wonderful uh, roast leg of lamb and leeks and other things and even vegetarian offerings. We have a St. David's dinner. Um, we are not going, unfortunately, not going to be able to have that this year because the fifth floor room is being uh, renovated. Um, and we will not be able to get into the room. So um, as my daughter, Sean Ely, said when we all heard this in a council meeting a few weeks ago, uh, there's a good um, phrase to be made here having to do with leaks, stopping leaks. But um, anyway, you can all think about that and come up with a better way to put that than I did. But anyway, that's uh, to give my daughter credit for that one. So no dinner. And again, very sorry about that. It's just this year. We will do it again next year. Um, so that is and then there is no church service in March. The next one will be April. So that's the next few services. In terms of under Milkwood, we have, since we have a wide open March ahead of us, um, the under Milkwood reading on Zoom will be held on March 23rd. That is a Saturday. We've been doing them on Saturdays for a while now, and it will be held at 3 p.m. EST. We do it on Saturday as an FYI because the Welch Churches of London have been joining us since it's on Zoom. We have people from all around the world, all around the country, uh, joining the reading, which is wonderful. But they have their own church services on Sunday. So to make it easier for them, it's Saturday, the 23rd of March at 3 p.m. If anyone uh, who has not been in it before or anyone hearing this or anyone you may know, those of you on this Zoom call, would be interested in participating in the reading, there are lots of parts. And um, you can email me at tomeely53 at gmail.com, which is T-O-M-E-L-E-Y 53 at gmail.com. And um, if you'd like to be in the reading this year. So um, I think, Kevin, that's about all I have. As you say, very busy. If anyone has anything else to add, please indicate if I've left anything out. Otherwise, 
that is what we have thank coming up. Thank you, Tom, uh, for the announcements. I'm, I'm looking forward uh, to our special reading of Under Milk Wood. And uh, Tom's been kind enough to include me in the cast. I don't know what I'm going to be yet, um, but I'm looking forward to it. It's one of my favourite dramas of all time. And uh, I do encourage you to listen in uh, when uh, we do that. Uh, just a few words about uh, the New York Church uh, here uh, in New York and online. Uh, there is an opportunity for you uh, to give to the church uh, and feel free to do that. You can go to our website and there is uh, to give a donation. Please see our website's red button on our front page. You are more than welcome uh, to contribute uh, to the work we do and to the, the gospel uh, amongst the Welsh uh, here uh, in New York and in the North Shore and even all over uh, the world as well. Okay, so uh, just a note uh, there. Uh, as I often say, if I'm talking about money, uh, some preachers talk about money and they say something like this. If you give us a hundred dollars, God will bless you with a thousand. Well, let me tell you this. I tell you this. You give us a hundred dollars and you'll be less of a hundred dollars. You'll be down a hundred dollars. But if it's a good cause, it's a good thing to be down on. So uh, if you feel like giving, please feel free uh, to do that. Our offering uh, hymn and last hymn is one of the great hymns, uh, really, of Wales, still sung at international rugby games, maybe in different tone, but we all know it. And it's sung to Cumbranda, guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. And we can follow this uh, on the video because the words come up as they are sung. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah.
gas and hardluith, yes, he greased. A charia do. A chamdeitha say lana spridev, a vada gudani oath at our hon. A canoi soy soyth. Amen. Time look and read. Your mean ogadani feel free to join with us in our virtual tea after the organ postlude. Thank you. 